Kia ora, welcome to Central News for Tuesday the 2nd of September. I'm Hilary Entwistle. A mystery artist's alterations to Tauranga election signs are setting new standards in the art of election sign augmentation, with mixed reviews from its victims. Signs for Labour's Tauranga candidate Rachel Jones and New Zealand First Leader Winston Peters received extreme makeovers seeing Rachel sporting metallic green nails and saucy red lips and posing Winston as the Mad Hatter. Rachel is so impressed with the alterations to her sign she's taken it home to keep his artwork. Meanwhile, Winston Peters' sign appeared briefly before being taken down by the local New Zealand First sign patrol team. Mr Peters says he is not going to give some looney tune the option of respectability by responding to this by highlighting their work when basically... It's a crime. Two customised shipping containers have been transformed into an innovative backdrop for a mobile exhibition commemorating the centenary of World War I. The exhibition has been compiled by the Tauranga Heritage Collection in partnership with World War I Tauranga and the Hauraki Regimental Association. It tells the story of Tauranga man Private Reginald Watkins, as well as featuring other World War I objects and their stories. As part of the commemoration, there will also be 107 crosses alongside the containers representing the men killed during World War I who were either born in Tauranga or had Tauranga listed as their last known address. Hamilton City Council has resolved to prepare a statement of proposal around the possible sale of Council's older person's housing stock, with first preference going to sympathetic social housing providers. Once the statement of proposal has been adopted, Council will undertake full public consultation, including a hearings process. This is expected to be later this year. Karapiro residents are being asked to be conscious of their water use over the next month while one of their reservoirs is emptied for maintenance. A recent assessment of both reservoirs which service Karapiro identified that structural repairs were needed for one reservoir and that a stainless steel pipe should be installed on the one on the roof of the other. The pipe is to prevent the water ponding on the roof. Waipa District Council's Manager of Water Services, Lorraine Kendrick, says the work was important to keep the reservoirs in a good condition. The Bethlehem Community Patrol is low on funds and volunteers and is putting out a call to its community for both. The unit currently has 12 volunteers patrolling Bethlehem, Brookfield, Otamotai and Matua areas twice weekly but they'd like 40 helpers to see their vehicle hit the road daily. Bay Plenty Community Patrol New Zealand District Representative Shirley Vincent says community patrols aim to keep communities safer by being the eyes and ears for police. Shirley says it costs $85 to fill the patrol car, which comes out of volunteers' pockets, and vehicle insurance is another expense. The chief executive of Waikato Tainui Te Kahang Nui Parikai Fia McLean will receive a Distinguished Alumni Award from the University of Waikato this month. Ms McLean has a Bachelor and Master of Social Sciences from the University of Waikato and later attained an MA from the University of Wisconsin. She is currently part of the group overseeing the development of a Waikato Regional Economic Strategy and has recently become a director of Te Putahitanga o Te Waipaunamu, the Fano Order Commissioning Entity for the South Island. Now for the marine forecast, West Coast, Raglan. It is becoming a uh, variable 10 knots on tomorrow morning. Your high tide is at 4.12pm. East Coast Bay Plenty, southwest 10 knots dying out early morning. North Easterlies, 10 knots developing in the afternoon. Mainly fine out there. Your high tide is at 1.16 in the afternoon. Just ahead, the Great Gallagher Race.
Since 2002, the University of Waikato have challenged teams from all around the world to a great race on the Waikato River, the Galaha Great Race. And with me now are the University of Waikato crew for 2014. Finn, this is your second time racing. What makes the Galaha Great Race so special? Uh, it's quite unique, um, just mainly because it's on a river with such amount of current on it. Um, so it throws a spanner in the works in some, in some ways, yeah. Do you have to change the way you actually row? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not the same because it's just there's so much current, so the boat's just thrashing around and you just a completely different way of rowing, more or less. Mm. And also it's a longer course, it's over 4 k's instead yeah. of a traditional 2? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's about 3 k's and it takes about the same distance as 5 k would take, so it's more of an endurance race rather than a 2k sprint which is another spanner in the works. Word on the street is that this team is a pretty strong team that, that has been assembled to take on Harvard and Melbourne, would you agree? Yeah, yeah um, definitely a strong crew, we've all just come back from um, under 23 world champs, well seven of us, um, and our coxswains uh, at world champs coxing at the moment as well so uh, he's got a lot of experience um, but very strong crew, we all most of us medals, so yeah, good. We have got some first timers in the crew this year as well. Isaac, Anthony and Alex. Have you been told what to expect on the boat? Yeah, just um, if the boat's feeling like it's going alright, it's probably going really well and a lot of blade flashing. Have you watched the races previously? Uh, yeah, I've watched about the last three years of them. And uh, what, what are your thoughts going into this race? I think it looks pretty exciting, I'm, I'm pretty amped for it. You've recently come back from the World Champs in Italy, how's that experience going to help you on the Waikato River? Um, I think it'll help us probably gel together a lot more because we've all, we've all been in the same campaign and we're all at probably similar level in terms of fitness wise at the moment. Absolutely, because the uh, World Champs were only a month ago? Yeah, three weeks ago, so we're all getting it back into it now. Is that going to give you an advantage over Harvard and Melbourne do you think? Yeah, I think it will, as it's quite a long race compared to, what, 2Ks, so yeah, I think it'll help in the long run. Alex, what do you know about the competing, the, the crews you'll be competing against? Uh, not a whole lot, to be honest. We know that there's a few Kiwi boys in the, <coughs> in the Harvard crew, and uh, so they'll bring um, a lot of experience. They're all a bit older, a bit stronger, so they'll be, they'll be good. Um, and Melbourne will obviously still have a good crew as well, no doubt. Does it help you having the Rowing New Zealand base here at Lake Katapiro? Does that help in the sense that all the support you need is right here in preparing for this particular race as well? Uh, yeah, maybe not so much for this race because it's, you know, it's so different being on the river, but just having all of us together, we all know each other, we've all rowed together, um, that helps, you know, like Anthony said, gel together. Paddy, I'll, I'll move on to you. How many times have you raced in this particular race? This will be my second time, so last year was my first time. And judging on last year, what are you expecting? Uh, another big event, uh, especially the start. Coming out of the start is always really exciting. The three boats there pushing in for that first uh, inside corner and in the lead into the, into the river, so that's always the, the most exciting part for me, really. Tell me about the indoor race. What is this about? Uh, so the indoor race is... Uh, an accumulative event, so we race in pairs over 500 metres and to see who can get the, the fastest overall average time and then the winners from that will decide where on the river they'll uh, like to start, either be at the east bank, the west bank or in the middle, depending. There's a lot of variation in the current, so the east bank, you know, like will change from the west bank and yeah, so it's a big, it's a big one. So do you make the call on the day where you want to be? Um, not really. We. We know because we've done it for so many years, Waikato, so Ross is pretty experienced and he knows where, where we want to sit and so yeah, well, it's up to Ross, well, he knows what to do. Tell me about your position on the boat. So I'm in fire seat, so I'm sort of just uh, a powerhouse there, you know, an engine room as they say, yep. And of course the Cox, who's not here, but it's a pretty important job, especially on the river, I'm, I'm thinking, against the current. Yeah, Caleb, so he was a, an old boy from Hamilton Boys, so he's, he's had plenty of years on the, uh, on the river training with Hamilton Boys all through school, so he definitely knows uh, the river like the back of his hand, so that's a huge advantage for us. 
Hayden, what do you think are the different strengths that this team have that's going to help you on the water? Um, well, I think well, everyone's pretty experienced this year. As mentioned before, everyone's done 23, so it's going to be a pretty strong crew. And having an experienced coxswain always makes it easier as well. Tell me about your position on the boat. Uh, so I'm up in the bow in two seats, so I don't just sit there and row, listen to the, listen to the <laughs> coxswain and just do whatever. <laughs> so to someone watching who knows nothing about rowing, wh where are you? What does that mean? Uh, so, oh, for me, so I'm in the end of the boat that will cross the line at the uh, first, I guess. So, and then, I don't know, there's not much to say. I'm just rowing. <laughs> it's rowing, it's yeah. rowing. And you're just listening to what they tell you to do and just going and going, hopefully at the same time, yeah. and uh, getting through that current. And of course, there's a couple of bridges to get through <laughs> as well. Are you are nervous about that part? Like, there's a couple of bridges, and you don't really want to hit either of the, the, the supports, do you? No, 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 not at all. I think it happened a few years back, but uh, yeah, we, Caleb's pretty good. Caleb's experience, like Hayden said, he's been on the river for I don't know five, six years, so he'll 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 have it sorted. Yeah. And tell me about the spectators. How many do? How many people do you want to see down there? And uh, do you want them to bring your cowbells? Yeah, as much as support as possible. Really, it all helps, especially when you come into that last little bit. Mm. It all helps to get the crew going. Do you hear the noise? Do you hear the noise out on the water when you're out there? Um, it, I think it depends on the person. I tend to not hear the noise when I'm racing, but a lot of other people do. Paddy's, Paddy's nodding. You hear the noise. Yeah, well, it's different on a 2K <laughs> course, obviously, but on the, on the river, you know, everyone comes down from their houses. We've got sections on the river, and you, so you see families down there, and they're all yelling. You're, you're so close to the bank, because the inside bank, there's no current, so the boats are right in close to the, to the tree edge, and yeah, the, you can hear everything. It's cool. The Gallagher Great Race takes place on Waikato River on Sunday the 15th of September. For all the racing details, go to thegreatrace.co.nz. Coming up next, business confidence has fallen in the bay. Welcome back to Central News. Business confidence in the northern region fell dramatically in the latest Chamber of Commerce survey. Exporters maintain the high dollar is denying them international opportunities and access to finance and investment continues to be a challenge for some businesses. But the biggest issue constraining growth in the region is demand, which is flowing through to lower intentions to employ, fewer hours to be worked and lower profitability. I spoke with Anne Pankhurst from the Tauranga Chamber of Commerce to find out how much confidence has fallen. Um, in real terms, I think about five to ten percent. You know, so it's it, it's just sort of a general stepping away from feeling confident, and it's some there's some factors that make that up. But I think that it's not, you know confidence is that sense of yes, we can go ahead. Yes, we've got the staff. Yes, we've got their money to invest. So it's kind of a it's just a feeling thing. I don't think it's actually a real drop in activity. How much has it fallen? What was it in the past? It's very difficult to tell you exactly, you know, it's a, a percentage, but it's just that, that all of those factors that make up that sense of we can do business, we can do it successfully, and we're feeling good about moving forward. At the risk of asking a silly question, what does business confidence measure? It measures exactly those things, you know, um, do you have enough money to put into your business? Do you know that you can get your money to put into your business? Do you have enough staff? Is your staff churn too high? Those kind of things that actually, the day-to-day the, the -day mechanics of running your business, that sense of, yes, I've got money. Yes, I can get money if I need to grow. Yes, I've got enough skilled staff. Yes, I've got enough unskilled staff. So it measures, are you, are you in the right place to do business? Those sorts of questions that measures your confidence to actually build your business in this place with the people that you have. 29% of firms were finding it hard to attract the right people with the right skills. What is that a reflection of? What could be causing that? I think it's a lot to do with in this city, we, we have no trouble getting people. What we do have is a trouble of a career progression and sometimes that's spousal career progression. So you might come to the city with your job, which is a high-end management job or a high-skilled job, but your, your spouse may not be able to get the same 
job that is equal to their particular skill. Or, and so there's a, it's kind of reaching a bit of a glass ceiling. We need to build our economy that those middle to upper businesses can offer that career pro progression, that there is that other spousal opportunity. So all of those sorts of things impact on that skill that needs to be brought into the city. It's changing, and it's changing for the better, but there's still a bit of a gap which causes that we can't quite get the right skill. So when they look outside of the city and they go to Auckland, those people have a whole lot of other lists of things that they want to have to move down here. And a lot of it sits around that cultural amenity, this, what are the schools like, um, where can my kids go to do things, can my wife's husband get a job, a whole lot of other questions. How do we encourage more jobs like that? Um, exactly. We just have to keep building on those businesses that are here. We have to keep relocating. Priority One does a great job with that, of, of relocating businesses into the city of size and scale. You know, uh, those businesses are anything from 25 employees up. They need to have size and scale. They need to be looking forward and, and looking forward to growth, which can happen very easily in the city but then that, that gap and that skill comes in. Some businesses were finding it hard to find unskilled labour. First off, how do you define unskilled labour and what's causing that? Unskilled labour is that labour um, that doesn't require too much qualification. Is, you know, maybe it's about kiwi fruit packing or on a production line. And I suspect, although I'm not entirely sure, I suspect it's because of the amount people want to pay unskilled labour and how much unskilled labour are prepared to accept nowadays. Um, that does make a difference and I think that's where it sits. So although I'm not a believer in going to the um, compulsory living wage, I think you're finding more and more companies are finding that they need to be at that living wage level. The high Kiwi dollar came up again. I personally think, and I think the Chamber supports us, that that is the new dollar now. That is the new rate. You know, it's going to be a long, long time before it ever drops back to the 70s or the 60s like it was. I think more and more exporters are beginning to understand that that is the place that they're dealing in, and they make those um, adjustments accordingly. They are actually coming to terms with that, it doesn't make it easy for them and I'm not sort of for a minute undermining that. But uh, certainly the, the, in the 80s to 90s is the new Kiwi dollar and until the American dollar gets a bit stronger, it's going to be there and I don't, can't see that happening in the sh next short while, it's going to be there for a long time. Are any businesses benefiting from a high Kiwi dollar? They bring in goods at a high rate and are able to sell them and they make they do really, really well out of it. So if they're importing, and so if your commodity that you're exporting has a component of importing, then you're able to make up the difference of the high dollar with that. But it is those importers that bring in on a high dollar. If they make it here, they take that and then build on it and then ex export it again, they will benefit. But Or if you're bringing it into retail here, they make they do all right out of it. What is the answer? We just come to terms with this as the marketplace and find places that, you know, the biggest problem we have is that we're a high, we are a high value product usually. We don't actually make low value products. If you think of wine, it's a high value product. A lot of our products that we export overseas, and we're proud of this, are those high value products. So if you're already at a high value price, to add a high value dollar on that, it adds a bit of concern for the, dollar, for the exporter. Coming up next, portraits of our place. Welcome back. The Western Bay Plenty Council went on a bit of a road trip recently to get feedback from the community about what is important to the Western Bay. I caught up with Mayor Ross Patterson to find out what the portraits of our place was all about. It was a, um, an old Betty bus that we it up uh, with signs all around the side and some portraits and took that out amongst the community uh, to engage the community on a one-to-one -one and to just find out what they uh, felt for their district, what they wanted their council to do and where their council to lead them to. Very interesting uh, experience. The aim was to get the grassroots feedback from the community. How do you go about that? Um, that's where our communities are and we stretch from Waihi Beach to Otamaraka and right around the hinterland so it is a large area and to expect them to come into the central uh, for contact with councillors and council business 
is not reality. So we've made a decision to go out and meet them out in their patch, out in their towns and their areas and just see what's the things that really made them uh, tick and what they wanted council to do. A consensus that was felt that uh, residents love that small town feel. How would you describe a small town feel? Uh, a small town feel is, a, is where a lot of people know each other and they are on first name terms, they love that environment, uh, they don't want the big super city type of uh, structure and that's why they live in those small town areas. Uh, they have thoughts about the environment, about the future and that the place stays there for their children and possibly even their children's children and there is no great change. And how does the council cater for that? Uh, the first way to cater for it is to go out and actually uh, understand and talk to them and not assume but to go and talk to them and bring on board their thoughts. Uh, we cater for it in the roles of uh, our community service and mainly in our infrastructure so side of things. I think infrastructure is our main role but uh, as well as that we do have the community service side that we provide to our people throughout the district. You ask the community what they see the role of the council is in their day to day lives. What was some of the feedback? The first main feedback was affordability. They wanted to be able to still live there and uh, things were affordable costs and I think that's at the forefront of everybody. It's just not local government costs, it's cost for petrol, power, telephone, all those sort of things. Uh, the other one was they liked the feel of the place and didn't want it to change too much. They wanted to be involved in any change, in any discussion for change. Uh, they wanted us to look after the environment, very strong on that. And as I said earlier, look after the place for the future for their children and their children's children. To find out more about the council, visit westernbay.gov.nz. And later on in the week, I found out from the Mayor about the Housing Accord. Now for our region's weather for Wednesday. Hamilton, mostly sunny with the chance of an afternoon shower. Light winds also. Your expected high is 18 and an overnight low of 3. The rest of the Waikato, you can expect a mainly fine Wednesday apart from some isolated afternoon showers. Light winds. Pairoa, your expected high is 17 and an overnight low of 6. Matamata, 16 and 5. Te Aumutu, 18 and 3, and Tokoroa, 16 and 4. Tauranga, your Wednesday will be mostly sunny with light winds. Your expected high is 18 and an overnight low of 8. The rest of the Bay of Plenty, fine, apart from isolated afternoon showers. You have some light winds there. Tupuki, you can expect a high of 16 and an overnight low of 8. That is central news for today. Let us know of anything that is happening in your community that you'd like us to come along to. You can contact us at our Facebook page, centralnews.tv, or email us, news at tvcentral.co.nz. Tomorrow night, we have age concern on the programme about overtaxation on savings, and some stories from the community halls of our region, and one may include an exploding toilet. I'm Hilary and Twistle. I hope you have a lovely evening. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.